Bits of a bite's no Zeit kann absolut so schaskata. U jer par matneris vera darza. Ins getaschemin, hin ganz arani. Daran vera patrast kachvats so glad that we're together today, coming into your homes, bringing in this very special message, and we do it in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I'd like to talk to you about friendship. It's unusual sometimes to hear that word, especially coming from a priest. Yes, friendship. It's the most basic of relationships, and we think it unusual when we hear it inside of a church setting. We usually think of church as a place where we talk about the holiness between us and God and forget that the reason for that holiness, the reason for that relationship upward and with God is so that we can enjoy the relationship that we have together with one another. Friendship. Sometimes if you're lucky you find that friendship in a spouse, in a husband or a wife. Sometimes you find it in a partner. Somebody who walks with you through difficulties and shares your joys. And we call that person a friend. A partner sometimes through life, sometimes through some very difficult situations, and then we no longer see that person. Yet the idea of friendship is one that is sanctified by our Lord himself. Jesus Christ tells us, he says, greater love has no, that no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. He, of course, was talking about his own experience with friends, that he was laying down his life for his friends. And who were those friends but his disciples? The ones that would then take the message and spread it throughout the entire world. The message of hope, the message of faith, and the message, of course, of love. Now, I'd like to talk about friendship because this coming week, there are two very special feast days in the Armenian Orthodox calendar. One is the feast day of Serpots Revontians, the, the feast of the, the, the group of saints known as the Leonitis or Revontians, and the other one is Serpots Vartanans, the group that are, that are huddled around the Saint Vartan. Now these two people, Leon and Vartan, happened to be very close friends. And they were able to accomplish something that you or I may not be able to accomplish alone. They may not have been able to accomplish alone, but together as a team, as friends, they were able to accomplish. And that's why I'm talking about it, because in our lives, we sometimes look for that partner, look for that individual, and we think that maybe it's not necessary. No, it is necessary. To get the big things done in life, you need people. You need community. You need that networking. You need friends. And certainly these two friends were the ones who were able to accomplish something great. You may have heard of St. Vartan. In fact, it is one of the early poems that many children learn. If you go to an Armenian school, they teach you this thing. I am, yes, Kach Vartanin Tornemnes. I am an Armenian because I am St. Vartan's grandson, granddaughter. And in many ways, uh, that, that is a reflection of how endearing that saint is to the Armenian people. Perhaps you haven't heard of the other one. His name is Saint Leon, Revont in Armenian. And Revont was a priest. Vartan was a warrior, and his friend Revont was a priest. Together, they brought together two very important aspects of our being. They brought together the physical and the spiritual. Combined them together to have a victory. Now the war that took place back in the 5th century is called Avarair. And at that war, both of these characters happened to be there. One of them, Vartan the warrior, other one, Revont the priest. They led the Armenian army to a, are you ready for this? A defeat. The Armenian Ar Armenians were defeated in that war. And this is perhaps the most unusual 
event that takes place. You probably never, never, ever heard of a group of people who celebrate, who celebrate a defeat. Yet we Armenians do that. We celebrate Vartanats. It was by all accounts a defeat. Vartan was in fact, as the head of the Armenian army, he was even killed. And in fact, many of his warriors were killed. In fact, the battle was, was called, and it was called in, uh, for the Persians. In other words, the Armenians lost. So why are we here, 1700 years later, celebrating this defeat? Because, look who we are today. We have kept our Christianity. And so while we lost the physical battle, we won the spiritual battle. We were able to keep that which was important to us. You see, Christ commands us to follow him. And he doesn't command us to follow him in an easy path. Instead, he says, he who wants to follow me, he must pick up his cross and follow me. In fact, he goes one step further. He says, unless you pick up your cross, you cannot be my disciple. It is the cross of suffering. It is the symbol of suffering, of giving of oneself. And so Saint Vartan, Saint Revont, both of these warriors in their own right, one physical and one a spiritual warrior, were able to take on that cross upon themselves. And they led the people into a victory. Because, you see, the physical battles are all around us. It's the emotional battles that you need to get a handle on. Anyone will tell you. Do you remember last week we talked about addictions? Well, the addictions are the physical battles that we undergo. But the emotional battles are sometimes hidden, sometimes scarred deep down within us, within our mind, within our psyche. They're definitely within our hearts. And you need to get in there. You need to pull apart some of the baggage that we have and get down into the psyche, get down into the spirit. And that's something that only your faith can do. No one else can do it. You can't go to a physician and say, please open me up. I want to see where I'm hurting in my heart. They can change the valves. They can change the arteries. But they cannot change what's inside, the difficulties, the hatred. And so once you get to the real physician, the physician of the soul, and that physician, you know where it is? It's right in your neighborhood Armenian church. Because when you get in there, you start praying. You start understanding that you are part of a greater network, that you come down on your knees. People come up to me and they say, why do we need to go to church? I could be a good Christian. Yeah, you can be a good Christian. But you know why you go to church? Not to be a Christian, but to humble yourself. You see, when you come down on your knees, what are you saying? You're admitting to somebody and saying, wait, more importantly, you're admitting to yourself that something's more important than yourself. You're humiliating yourself. You're humbling yourself. Yes, humiliating. Those aren't things that are popular these days. But you need to come down a line. You need to realize that there are greater things in this world. Doesn't it bother you that every day we wake up with the news of what's going on, especially today in the Middle East, when we hear about wars, about revolutions, and then you turn the channel, and then they talk about, well, the Academy Awards. In fact, in just about an hour, they're going to give out the Academy Awards. Everybody's going to get dressed up very nicely. It's so superficial. I enjoy a good movie, just as you do. But to make such a big stir about, a commotion, about a piece of film? I mean, you got people spending millions, billions. And meanwhile, people are going hungry. Meanwhile, people are being bombed. You see the superficiality in there? You need to go through all of that superficiality and get down to the soul. Vartan and Revont were two people that we're able to do this for our Armenian people. And that's why we look up to them. That's why the Armenian church celebrates them. Because they were able to get rid of that physical nonsense and come up to the spirit and say that today we lost the war. We may have lost the war physically, but today, emotionally, spiritually, we have won the great war. We have retained our faith. You see, St. Vartan went up to the king of the time who wanted to convert the Armenians, and he said, hey, listen, in this world, we will recognize you as a king. But in the world that we're talking about, in heaven, there is only one king, and that is Jesus Christ. 
And now remember this. This is taking place in the 5th century. Actually, the date is 451. It happens to be 150 years after the birth of Christianity in Armenia. Think about it. Christianity is still new. Christianity is still in its infancy stages. It's not a 2,000-year religion, only 150 years. Only a few generations had gone by. And yet Vartan has the, the courage to stand up and he says, what do you think? It's some kind of shirt that I could just take off of me? No, this is part of my being, my body, my soul. And you can't take this faith away from me. And they wage the battle, outnumbered, knowing that they're going to die physically, but knowing that the victory is theirs. Because of the words that Jesus Christ said, greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And so Vartan, Revont, they lay down their lives for their friends, for their people, knowing that the victory is theirs. Just as Jesus Christ had the ultimate victory over the cross, over Golgotha, over that Good Friday, making that Friday into a good one because the victory was his, the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Vartan and Revont, two friends coming together, doing an incredible mission. Now, as I always ask you, put your feet in the shoes of theirs. Don't take it as only a history lesson today, but how can you make a difference in this world? Well, you realize that all around you, you have people. The ones that you trust, the ones that you love, the ones you care for, you may call friends. But I challenge you today to find and select friends. Friends that can walk with you, that can make a difference in this world. All around you there is difficulty. You don't need to look in the Middle East. You could see it right in our neighborhoods. If you're living in Glendale, in Burbank, in Hollywood, you know right around in your own areas. There are people who have who have lost themselves to materialism, to drugs, many of the difficulties that are realities in our lives. Be that person, be that extending hand, be that friend to these people by laying down yourself, laying down your life for them, giving of yourself. And sometimes, tragically, you'll find that those difficulties are not only to your friends, but also in your families. Don't despair. Don't think that you can't overcome those difficulties in your life. Know that the friendship that you have, a partnering with God and the friends around you, you can move mountains, as did Vartan, as did Revont. I think it's beautiful because for us in the Armenian church, we have these two saints standing as pillars of our faith this week. And by the way, did you know that here in America, we have these two saints standing as protectors of our faith. Yes, in fact, where I'm coming to you from today is the St. Revont Cathedral. It is the cathedral, the center of the faith here in the West Coast. And guess what? On the East Coast of the United States is St. Vartan Cathedral. Think about that for a moment. These two friends standing on two sides of the continent, protecting us. Now, are we worthy of that protection? You better believe it. We're worthy of that protection, but we need to also take a hold of our responsibility and become those Christians, become those people that are proud enough to say, yes, we are the children of Vartan, but more importantly than that pride, than that, soft, than that uh, false pride, is to be able to say, we take on the responsibility of children of Vartan. And so where there is difficulty, we extend ourselves. We become the warriors. We become the Saint Vartan, the Saint Revont in our lives. May the memory, may the stories of Vartan and Revont always inspire us into the generations to come. I look forward to being with you next week as we kick off the great Lenten season. But until then, I invite you to join us where you'll find all kinds of information about this as well as other events coming up in the Armenian Church. Yes, do check out the diocese website, but if you want to get in up close and personal with some of the ministry that we're talking about over here, we're at epostle.net. That's apostolic evangelism for an electronic universe. Until next week, we look forward to seeing you. May God bless you, and we do all things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.